The budding space tourism industry has a big year ahead, with more and more people, mostly the ultra-wealthy, booking their flights. But there's a lingering question on some minds. How bad will space tourism be for our climate? First things first, Bloomberg reporter Edward Ludlow is here to explain what is space tourism. In the last couple of years, it's basically been taken to mean civilian space flight for recreational purposes, going into space, whether it's for a few minutes or for a longer period of time, just for the sheer experience of being outside of Earth's atmosphere for a few minutes of weightlessness or a few days of the experience. So, Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic are offering rides to suborbital space, with some customers paying up to $450,000 per ticket. A hefty price for a trip that only achieves a few minutes of weightlessness. Even though a suborbital flight barely touches the edge of space, will the emissions from the uptick of space tourism affect our atmosphere? Karen Rosenloff, who has been working on stratospheric ozone research for the last 30 years, tells us right now there is no clear answer. The perturbation due to rockets right now is not huge. So in, I'm not sure that we could even tell you outside of the uncertainties of our, our model estimates, whether the current load um, from rockets has made a significant climate impact. I think what we can say is, you know, we've seen variations in things like black carbon over the last 20 years that we're actually investigating to see is this consistent with increases in rocket traffic. According to Rosenloff, these emissions don't last in our middle atmosphere forever. When you put something up of the middle atmosphere, we flush it in about four years. You know, so if you stopped emitting stuff four years later um, in terms of these kind of particles, they would mostly be gone. Part of the reason why it's difficult to calculate the climate impact from human spaceflight is that the rockets use a range of different propulsion systems and each produce different levels of emissions. So we discussed Blue Origin, uh, which uses a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen as its propellant. There's no carbon being burned, so there's very little carbon byproduct from the overall system. Then we talk about SpaceX, right? SpaceX is the most active of the launches right now, and it, it uses kerosene, good old fashioned kerosene, but it's combustion and the byproduct is large volumes of, of CO2. Virgin Galactic uses what's called a hybrid engine. It does use a, a propellant and an oxidizer, but it only does very short bursts. So as we discussed, it's only a 60 second burn on the rockets, but the carbon that it puts out is equivalent to an entire transatlantic flight. So there's two ways of looking at it. The actual space mission itself, the few minutes of weightlessness, does not have a high carbon output relative to daily airline travel. But if they ramp up their number of launches to say 400 a year, of course the impact will be much greater. But emissions from spacecrafts aren't the only way our environment could be impacted. Tiago Suarez, a systems engineer at the European Space Agency, says that it's not just the burning of the propellant that can impact our environment, but the actual production of it. We have a uh, look, for example, as, at the way we produce the, the propellants, because there's a big mass of propellant, and if you do it in an environmentally friendly way, um, it can reduce significantly the, the environmental impact. But for satellites, I can tell you, for example, we are trying to uh, recycle uh, germanium, that is a very rare metal that is used in, um, in solar panels and in solar cells. And this is one of the major environmental impacts that uh, we found out and that could indeed make a big difference if we manage to find ways to, to recycle it. Scientists who study atmospheric pollution also say satellites launched into space might have a larger impact than commercial rockets the emissions are going to come from launches of, of small satellite systems. That that's, you know, GPS systems and, and various communication systems. That would be where the bulk of the emissions from rockets come from. But our, our concern is if that increases. And that may be likely to happen. Luke Paget, CEO of ClearSpace, says we're just at the beginning of what could be a booming space industry. Branson and Musk, they're just kind of scratching the surface of what space tourism could be. If you look at it, the space industry is a little like, like the beginning of the aviation. To be able to send astronauts into orbit without spacesuits is a, is a huge step forward. But I think it's a real concern 
uh, in the space industry to make sure that the operation is safe, uh, reliable, and sustainable. Thank you.